Hello, hello, and welcome, everyone. Welcome to Cloud Native Live, where we dive into the code behind Cloud Native. I'm Taylor Dolezal, head of ecosystem at the CNCF, where I work closely with teams as they navigate their cloud native journeys. Uh, every week, we bring a new set of presenters to showcase how to work with cloud native technologies. They'll build things, they will break things, and they will answer your questions. In today's session, Alara Ozturk has joined us to talk about using Calico, eBPF, Linux, Windows, on Azure, and AKS. This is an official live stream of the CNCF, and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please don't add anything to the chat or uh, voice any questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. Basically, please be respectful to one another, and uh, let's have a fantastic session today. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Alara to kick off today's presentation. Alara, please take it away. Welcome. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I think there was a small confusion. So Alara is our, uh, uh, I'm, I'm Giri Radha Krishnan, by the way. Uh, oh, gotcha. I thought Sorry. she was gonna join, I thought she was gonna join the meeting. Uh, she uh, works for, uh, she's in a different team and she manages all these uh, you know, meetings. Uh, sorry about the confusion. So yeah, my name is uh, Giri Radha Krishnan. I'm a product marketing manager uh, at Tigera, uh, and I'll be presenting today. Let me start sharing my screen first. <clears throat> uh, let right. me know. All right, you can see my screen. Looks good. Hello, everyone. Um, so uh, I'm excited to present this today. Uh, so I'll uh, talk about Calico CNI for uh, Azure AKS and also um, a little bit about Calico's eBPF data plane. And uh, Microsoft recently announced a bring your own CNI program. Uh, and uh, we jumped on this uh, opportunity to uh, have Calico uh, uh, be supported on AKS clusters. So uh, I'll, I'll go through the benefits and use cases why someone would want to use Calico CNI on uh, Azure. Uh, you know, just talk about uh, some of the use cases that we've we've noticed and we've seen, and also some of the benefits. <clears throat> uh, before I start, uh, just wanted to talk about Project Calico a little bit. So, so it's an active community uh, for cloud networking and security. Uh, uh, if you're not familiar with Calico, it's a, it's an open source CNI uh, that's available uh, to use on Kubernetes and other cloud native uh, uh, platforms. <clears throat> so uh, there are uh, links to uh, you know different uh, projects here, Project Calico, and then the GitHub link, and uh, you know links for the Slack channels. So there are about six thousand members, active members in our Slack channel, and we have. Uh, an active community of uh, around 150 contributors. And uh, in the next slide, I'll show you, uh, you know, uh, the, the depth and distribution of Calico. Uh, so feel free to join this community. Um, so uh, we, we would be uh, uh, excited to have you on our Slack channels where you can discuss with other members uh, about, you know, uh, just troubleshooting or uh, any Q&A that you have. <clears throat> so, uh, as you can see, it's one of the most widely adopted CNI uh, and security solution for Kubernetes. We we are powering more than two million nodes across, uh, you know, one sixty six countries, and uh, we've noticed that there's been a billion plus Docker pools for Calico, and uh, it powers uh, about five hundred thousand clusters <coughs> across these, you know. Uh, across 50,000 enterprises. So Calico also gives you a choice of data planes. Uh, we've designed it in a way that it's a pluggable data plane model. Uh, and Calico supports you know, standard Linux, it supports uh, eBPF, uh, and also the Windows host network uh, services, or HNS. <clears throat> uh, we support both, uh, you know, on-prem or public clouds. It could be on a single node. It could be across a thousand-node cluster. 
So whether you want to scale to thousands of microservices with eBPF, or if you want to add you know, Windows workloads to your Kubernetes deployment, uh, Calico has you covered. Uh, the core design principles of Calico, we leverage uh, you know, best practices of cloud native design patterns and combined with uh, you know, standards-based network protocols, which is trusted by uh, you know, the largest internet carriers. <clears throat> So what you get is, you know, exceptional scalability and uh, running at scale in some of the largest Kubernetes deployment and enterprises. Uh, so we work, Calico works across uh, all major Kubernetes distributions, whether it's uh, uh, OpenShift, uh, Rancher, Mirantis, on-prem, or some of the managed Kubernetes services like uh, Azure or uh, Amazon's EKS or uh, GKE. Um, <clears throat> it also works on hybrid platforms. We've noticed, uh, you know, some of our, uh, uh, you know, people that we talk to, they've used AWS Outposts or even Anthos for uh, their hybrid deployments. And uh, as I mentioned, works in a pluggable data plane model. We support eBPF, Linux, uh, and Windows, uh, and two types of containers at the moment. Uh, Linux and Windows. Uh, let me start uh, by talking a little bit about Calico's eBPF data plane. Uh, so today, Calico offers four data plane models, uh, uh, which is uh, data plane types, uh, standard Linux with IP tables, Windows HNS, eBPF, and VPP. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming most of you would know uh, the advantages of eBPF or what eBPF can do. So uh, to put it really simple, uh, simple words, it's just like a in kernel virtual machine that gives you know superpowers to your uh, Linux uh, programs. So what it does is you can attach mini programs to low level hooks in the kernel, and this gives you the ability to do you know advanced networking and security. Uh, uh, functions within your uh, software. So some of the key benefits that uh, I want to show you of using uh, eBPF is uh, performance. Um, that's that's the highest possible uh, benefit that you will get. And uh, the second is native Kubernetes service handling. And the third benefit is uh, source IP preservation uh, and direct server return or DSR. Um, so each benefit here will be significant and it's worth discussing uh, uh, you know, further. So let's do that now. Uh, <clears throat> when you talk about performance, uh, so we did a, a, a performance uh, throughput measurement using QPerf and uh, we used a pair of pods running on different nodes. Uh, I want to just uh, uh, give you a few details on how this test was performed. So uh, on the left, you see that uh, it was, uh, the MTU was uh, 1440, and on the right, you see the MTU is uh, uh, 8940. Uh, uh, basically, MTU is the maximum packet size, uh, and uh, 1500 is the you know realistic number for internet traffic and uh, 9k is uh, you know typically uh, called a jumbo frame and used within some data centers uh, what we've done is reduced it by 60 to be conservative just in case you're you know running uh, running it on top of some overlay network and uh, we measured both uh, cpu usage and throughput uh, i'll just talk about throughput now and uh, you can see that uh, with uh, 8940 MTU, uh, both options come close to saturating the 40 gig link. So uh, uh, one more thing I forgot to mention was we used a 40 gig link to uh, test this uh, uh, throughput. So at the smaller packet size, we see a gap in throughput uh, appear. Um, so QPerf generally limits itself to a single core, which makes it uh, a really good tool for seeing how much traffic can be pushed by uh, you know, any application with a limited amount of CPU. Uh, but uh, 
a caveat here is that not to misinterpret this data as a throughput, uh, as the throughput limit for the node rather than for a single instance of uh, Q per. <clears throat> so if you had more uh, CPU, you know, in a multi-threaded application and ran more pod instances, you could saturate the 40 gig link uh, theoretically. <clears throat> and uh, if, if you've not noticed yet, the red is uh, with eBPF and the blue is uh, with standard Linux networking. And you can see that the throughput is definitely higher with eBPF. <clears throat> The second benefit is uh, native Kubernetes uh, service handling. Uh, so originally, Calico's eBPF uh, data plane wasn't planned to replace Kube proxy, but uh, ultimately it did, and we'll see why. Uh, so uh, as a general philosophy, maintaining compatibility with uh, upstream Kubernetes components when possible <clears throat> is usually beneficial. Uh, but as you know, we started developing Calico, <clears throat> we found that the optimum eBPF design for Calico's feature wouldn't work with existing Q proxy uh, without, uh, you know, increasing the complexity and uh, reduction in performance. Uh, so once we, you know, uh, we started getting close to replacing Q proxy, we decided uh, how we could improve on the upstream implementation by natively handling Kubernetes services within Calico data plane. <clears throat> Uh, so in the next slide, you can see that we have uh, achieved uh, reduced latency. <clears throat> uh, so Kube Proxy's implementation, it uses a list of rules that grows with the number of services. So latency gets worse as the number of services increase. <clears throat> uh, both IPVS mode and our implementation, it uses an efficient map lookup instead, uh, resulting in a flat performance. You can see that uh, eBPF is uh, way below uh, compared to IP tables and uh, <clears throat> IPVS. That means it's uh, faster with, uh, with a you know, TCP connect type test. Uh, the next benefit, the last benefit I'm going to talk about is source IP preservation and direct server return. Uh, <clears throat> the data path through a cluster with the eBPF data plane enabled is much more simplified. Uh, it can be best understood with visuals. So I'll move on to the next slide and show you uh, very quickly. I'm not going to go into details uh, of this slide <clears throat> where it shows a difference between uh, Kube proxy, which is non-EBPF, and with Calico EBPF, how uh, there is benefit for uh, users to you know, go with the EBPF design. Uh, so very quickly on a high level, what you can see is that uh, with eBPF, you can actually uh, uh, know or save the uh, source IP of the uh, uh, host uh, external client. So what you see on top of the uh, image of both the images is external client and assume that uh, this is a, you know, a human user uh, or a computer outside the cluster. And uh, at the bottom, you can see two uh, nodes uh, Kubernetes cluster nodes in blue. And the external client connects to a service uh, load balancer to one of the cluster nodes. <clears throat> so in both the cases, it hits the uh, uh, load balancer, but uh, what happens next is what differentiates between uh, a non eBPF setup and an eBPF uh, implementation. And uh, the other advantage is uh, depending on how your network is set up, uh, if you uh, set it up in a way that it supports static server return, uh, it considerably reduces the latency uh, uh, at least by uh, half, so that it doesn't have to go through the uh, the first node uh, or the first part that uh, the traffic hits from the external client, and it directly uh, goes back to the client without the need to uh, uh, routing it through uh, additional uh, uh, points. <clears throat> Um, I will move on to uh, you know, the, the main topic for today, main agenda for today, which is uh, uh, Azure uh, AKS with uh, Bring Your Own CNI. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, uh, Microsoft 
Microsoft recently uh, announced a BYO CNI uh, program. Uh, prior to this, uh, there were two options. I think the default was uh, KubeNet and uh, also the option of using uh, Azure CNI for uh, <clears throat> uh, AKS clusters. So uh, you can actually configure network interfaces, manage connections, and you know provide all the IPAM uh, functionalities with Azure CNI or and IPAM uh, or KubeNet on AKS clusters. But uh, <clears throat> Calico's responsibility uh, was to just insert hooks for uh, network policies and you know also maybe do encryption and few other features. Uh, so CNI, if some of you are not familiar is basically providing a network interface and it's the brains behind uh, cluster interconnection or uh, you know communication between the pods and uh, what ipam does is uh, <clears throat> it's ip address management and it assigns you know simply assigns ip addresses for all the pods in the cluster so now uh, with the uh, recent announcement <clears throat> you can actually choose uh, an option CNI equal to none. I'll, I'll show you in a in a bit uh, in the next slides how this is done. So what you can do is actually choose a no CNI option and install Calico to uh, use uh, you know as as a choice for CNI and IPAM. Uh, it's a simpler approach, and uh, what it does is it provides fine grained uh, dynamic IP address management. And uh, I'll also explain why. This could be beneficial instead of using the Azure uh, CNI or KubeNet. So this is how you enable the uh, Calico CNI. Bring your own CNI preview plugin. Uh, it's documented by Microsoft and on uh, Calico document uh, documents docs. Uh, so our pages are updated to. Uh, show you how you can run calico with aks so these are uh, this is actually a preview feature and uh, it's provided as is uh, and the recommendation is to not directly use it in production so uh, word of caution there uh, i'm not sure if you can see the screenshot uh, you know uh, with all the details in it but it's just a sample screenshot of how uh, you can, uh, you know, create a group within the cluster in a specific location. Uh, here it is Northern Europe with uh, uh, type as Microsoft uh, Resource Groups, and uh, you can actually uh, reference the resource group where you can create the VMs, the number of uh, VMs, and uh, other feature flags. And you can notice that uh, hyphen network plugin option is set to none. <clears throat> and on the next slide, uh, once you do a get node, uh, you see that uh, the status is not ready. Um, uh, on, the, on the top, if you, if you, if you see the kubectl get nodes hyphen A, uh, you see that it's not ready because there is no CNI running. Uh, the pod status, uh, uh, will be in pending because TNS is not going to work uh, in this scenario until the CNI is up. Um, there, there was one question that came in um, asking uh, when might this be out of tech preview? Um, I'm hoping uh, in three months or within six months. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing that, but uh, that's my guess. Uh, but if you really want to know, uh, I mean, uh, you could, you could, uh, you know, uh, get back in a couple of weeks to, uh, or, um, you know, send us a message uh, on Slack to find out, but that's my guess. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> the next screenshot I'll be, uh, I can show you how the, uh, operator based install for Calico works. So we see that it's still not uh, ready here in this uh, screen. And now uh, uh, you can see that it's uh, running. All the uh, pods are running, and uh, you know, kubectl get nodes uh, shows that uh, everything is ready and running. Uh, 
Uh, few more things to note here. Right now, the implementation with uh, AKS supports only VXLAN. Uh, Calico usually supports IP, IP, or uh, and BGP. Uh, but in AKS, uh, at the moment, we support only <coughs> VXLAN as the encapsulation uh, methodology. Uh, you can see that the API server. Uh, um, can't quickly look at that, but uh, yeah, you can see uh, it waits until the CNI is running. And once you get a cube curl get pods, you can see most of the Calico system pods, uh, actually all the pods running here. <clears throat> so what it means is that all the relevant components for Calico is installed on each node. Um, <clears throat> So Calico was initially designed for standard Linux. So what this picture represents is that we've gone beyond just that. And uh, uh, Calico as a project extends to, uh, started extending it, just extending to other data planes. Uh, and what we've noticed that uh, eBPF has garnered a lot of attention recently. Uh, and as we saw in the first few slides, it allows you to write kernel level hooks for, uh, you know, uh, observability and security. Uh, observability is the buzzword right now. Everyone wants to uh, look at what's going on within your uh, cluster node and your, uh, you know, uh, complete uh, infrastructure. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, not just that, it also gives you performance gains and scalability. So uh, if you're working with an eBPF data plane in AKS, uh, Calico is available now. You could you could use it there, uh, and of course it's in preview stage currently. So, uh, with a word of caution, do not use it in production environments. Uh, and uh, another thing to note that is Calico also supports uh, Windows workloads. <clears throat> um, so there are some links here. Uh, note that uh, on uh, Azure hit CI, yeah, you know, Calico is the default option right now uh, for uh, <clears throat> CNIs, but uh, there are a couple of links here uh, for how to use uh, Calico with, you know, in the VXLAN mode and in both self managed and uh, managed uh, AKS clusters. <clears throat> so let's move on to some use cases and fits with uh, Calico on AKS. Why, why are we talking about Calico and someone need Calico on AKS? Uh, so you could use, uh, you know, Kubernetes, native Kubernetes services, you can use network policies, uh, but what do you get beyond that is, you know, all the capabilities of uh, Calico network policy. Uh, I'll, I'll show you three major benefits in the next few slides, but, uh, you could take full advantage of, uh, you know, all the advanced features that Calico provides by uh, going beyond the, uh, uh, you know, Azure CNI or the KubeNet CNIs. So the first benefit uh, that we talk about is you can dynamically grow and shrink your IP address space, your, your size is. Uh, so let's say you're migrating pods from one IP pool to another. Uh, how do you do this without network disruption? So we have uh, documented steps. Uh, so for all these benefits, there are uh, steps on how you do the, uh, you know, I would call these features and you could actually go, uh, go to Project Calico uh, docs and see how this is done. Uh, it's a simple five-step process of, uh, you know, adding and disabling new and old IP pools. Uh, removing it from the pod and adding it to the pod. It's it's as simple as five steps. And uh, uh, the use case is that you can actually migrate pods from one pool to, you know, to another without network disruption. So uh, I believe this cannot be done without uh, Calico. So, uh, <clears throat> and I, I'm sure, you know, folks will benefit uh, uh, from a, a feature like this. Um, the other benefit is, uh, 
uh, uh, floating IPs. So Kubernetes services, uh, just to refresh, it's it's a it's an abstract way to expose an application uh, according to uh, the Kubernetes document. That's what Kubernetes services mean. Uh, so it's very similar to that. And what you can do with floating IPs is that uh, it can front a workload. And uh, depending on how these workloads move around the cluster, you can actually use the same IPs uh, for the workloads. Uh, so for Kubernetes services, the host uses a NAT for incoming traffic. Uh, so to change the floating IP to the workload's real IP before uh, delivering packets to the workload, you could use this feature. And another advantage of using floating IPs with Calico is that uh, it, not, uh, it doesn't work only with TCP, uh, UDP, or SCTP. It works on all uh, network protocols. <clears throat> uh, and the other use case is uh, when you're operating with legacy firewalls, uh, you know, you still need uh, some of the, uh, you know, what we typically call north south uh, traffic uh, perimeter firewalls. And if you want to integrate those firewalls with uh, your cloud native applications, uh, what we can do is create an IP pool for the entire uh, uh, Kubernetes pod cider. Uh, but you can also break, uh, you know, break it up into uh, smaller pods uh, and you know change the uh, IP pool. <clears throat> so you can actually control which pool uh, Calico uses for each pod using node selectors. Uh, you can also use annotations on the pod uh, or even the pod's namespace uh, for you know uh, IP address assignment. <clears throat> you could also restrict a pod to use a, uh, an IP address range. Or you can restrict all pods within a particular namespace to use an IP address range. And again, uh, the documentation for this particular uh, feature or functionality is also shown uh, in this slide. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have seen this uh, table. So what it shows is, you know, this is a benchmark study done by an independent uh, uh, person, Alex, uh, but I, I, I forgot where it was published. I think it was itnext.io. Um, but you know it, what it shows is uh, how Calico uh, compares to the other CNIs in the market, uh, especially uh, you know when you look at encryption, uh, which Calico offers through WireGuard. You can see that um, you know it's a it's a clear winner there. Uh, and it's also excelling in all the other categories. Uh, but since the publication of this benchmark, what we've done is for MTUs, uh, uh, we've further strengthened and uh, uh, offer automated MTU configuration. So you can actually automatically determine the best MTU. Calico will determine the best MTU for new pods based on the underlying network MTU. and uh, uh, enabled uh, encapsulation methods. So what it does is it provides an optimal network performance uh, without any need for manual configuration. A <clears throat> uh, lot of text on this slide, but just a quick uh, overview is that you can configure MTU to maximize network performance. So based on your uh, underlying network, you can either decrease or increase your MTU uh, <clears throat> for optimal performance, but by default, Calico can auto detect and uh, use the correct MTU for your cluster based on node configurations. <clears throat> so with that, uh, it brings me to the end of the presentation. So if you have more questions, uh, that would be a I did see one question in terms of uh, asking about eBPF deployments. Um, didn't know if you either know of a demo or, or might have something on that front. Any good resources? Uh, unfortunately, I, I would. I'm not going to demo that. Uh, uh, you know that my technical counterpart would have done that if uh, he or she was available. I, I'm not sure who was uh, supposed to demo it today. Uh, I'm not very technical savvy to demo it, uh, but 
I don't know if Alara is going to work with you for future talks and someone can come and uh, demo the EVPF uh, solution there. Sorry Absolutely. about Absolutely. No worries. No worries. Uh, thank you. For, thank you for that question. I think uh, one other question that I had was uh, if you've learned any inter interesting lessons while working with uh, workloads or anything that you've heard from people that are, you know, have uh, Linux and Windows workloads together. Um, that seemed to be an interesting area for conversation as well as, you know, context in running those workflows. Uh, good question. Interesting question, but... Uh... Unfortunately, I don't think I have the, uh, you know, uh, I've not spent enough time uh, here uh, to talk about Windows workloads. Uh, as far as I know, I think most of the conversations that I've had with, uh, you know, uh, folks here uh, at Tiger is uh, Linux or eBPF. Uh, so I cannot speak much for Windows uh, workloads at the moment. Gotcha, gotcha. No yeah. worries. Thank you, thank you. Um, we do have a question here from Adrian asking, uh, are you planning to add Kubernetes multi-cluster capabilities in the open source version? Uh, multi-cluster capabilities. Um, I don't see anything in the roadmap as, uh, at the moment, but uh, I'll definitely take it back to you know, uh, the team and find out. Uh, uh, so uh, will these questions be available for me to, uh, is it saved anywhere? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, I can, I can get these okay. to you. Okay. Yeah. I, I'll definitely get back with, uh, the right answer, uh, after talking to the engineering team. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, it's, uh thank you all for asking so many questions. It's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> and I, and yeah, I apologize. Keep... <laughs> uh, I, I think the person who was supposed to give this talk was much more technical, uh, but, uh, you know, since they were not available, uh, I'm, uh, I had to do the presentation, but I, I'm sorry, I'm not able to answer most of the questions today. We can get you, we can get you synced up eventual consistency. You know, we'll get you in touch with the right person. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the next question that we had come up was uh, from James uh, saying, is it possible to get an external IP address with Calico on a self-managed Kubernetes cluster in an Azure VM instance? Uh, so you can get an external uh, IP address. If the question means that uh, will, it, will a static IP address work? Uh, and so there is a... Uh, functionality called egress gateway that we use. So uh, I'm assuming that's what uh, the question means. Uh, so yes, uh, with again, uh, a caveat that I'm not 100% technical on this. So don't uh, assume what I'm saying is right. But uh, yes is my answer at the moment. Cool. Excellent. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, our next question is, uh, what is the name of the tool used to test network stack performance? Uh, it was Qperf. Gotcha. Yeah. And and how do you spell that? I can post that to the uh, chat. Q, uh, just Q and P E R F. P E R F. What's the name of the tool? Test network performance. Thank you very much. No problem. All right. Awesome. It looks like that. those are all of the questions that I have so far. Again, if you all have any more, please feel free to throw them into the chat uh, and we can get everything synced up. I did see a question earlier, too, asking uh, if the slides or those links are going to be available at any point in time. I can always publish them to this video afterwards if, if they're open. Otherwise, I could sync up with you on any links that might be good to put into the video description. Okay. Uh, I think I forgot to mention one more thing. Uh, so there's actually uh, an Azure course uh, for, uh, you can become a certified Calico operator for, uh, for Azure. Uh, you can find the links here. I, I'm sure if you share the slides, they can uh, definitely get it. And there is also a Calico Big Cats ambassador program. Uh, for which I have a link here too. So I just wanted to uh, share that. Awesome, awesome. I'll get this to the chat. 
at least the Azure course. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Wonderful. Uh, again, feel free to throw any questions you might have into the chat. We can get those answered here. Uh, otherwise, we can give you... Uh, ah, yes, QPerf. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, otherwise, we can uh, close things up and give you a few minutes back. OK, we do have one more, a, one more question. Uh, is it su uh, also supported or plans in support for AWS or GCP? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. So uh, I think Azure was the only platform which was not supported, but AWS and GCP were always supported for Calico. You could so if you go to the docs, you can see how uh, you can install Calico on AWS or GCP. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah, I do remember the uh, early days of Calico. I think I got to see uh, some presenters on that front, like uh, working with the Canal Project mm -hmm. and uh, like so many, so many others. I think it was like back in the early times of oh, what was that? It was a. Uh, uh, core OS, uh, I think there was like a core OS summit and, and it was really interesting back then. It's amazing to see how far the project has come. Um, are there, are there any things that you're particularly <clears throat> excited about that are going to be coming out here in the future or just any kind of, uh, thoughts uh, or, or comments on the direction of the project? I think, uh, uh, eBPF is, is the most exciting. I see a lot of, uh, you know, even enterprise customers starting to use eBPF and talking about eBPF. So I think that's going to be, uh, interesting to see. Um, how it pans out. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I don't see any more questions that have come in. So mm. with that, I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, it was great to see you all here at the latest episode of Cloud Native Live. Uh, great to learn from Geary. Uh, we really enjoyed the interaction and questions from the audience. Uh, all yep. of you uh, have the best questions, and, and thank you all for coming and asking those. It's always great to, to see you, to, to, to chat with you as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We do hope to see you again soon. Uh, again, thank you so much, Gary, for coming and uh, being able to talk about eBPF, Calico, and, and everything else on AKS. And we definitely hope to see you around the community. Thank you all so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you all. See you, everybody.